This video will review section 3.3, where we discuss creating a confidence interval for a single quantitative variable. As with proportions, there are two methods for creating a confidence interval for a single mean. The first that we'll discuss is the 2SD method, or the simulation method. The general form of a 2SD confidence interval is to take your statistic plus or minus 2 times the standard deviation of the statistic, where the standard deviation of the statistic is either the standard deviation of the simulated null distribution or the calculated standard error of the statistic, which we find using a formula. For a single quantitative variable, the statistic is the sample mean, x bar, and the standard error of the sample mean is found by using s, the sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of n, the sample size. Therefore, the 2SD formula for a single quantitative variable is to take x bar plus or minus 2 times s over root n, or x bar plus or minus 2 times the standard deviation of the bootstrap distribution. Recall that the null distribution for a single mean was simulated by first shifting the data, then bootstrapping or sampling with replacement from the shifted data, and that the shift did not impact the standard deviation of the sample, and therefore would not impact the standard deviation of the null distribution. That means technically, we can simply bootstrap the original sample to get an estimate of the standard deviation of the sample statistics, meaning no shift in the data is needed. Review the bootstrapping video if you need a refresher on this simulation method. Be sure to note that this method only gives an approximate 95% confidence interval. Statistic is always calculated using the standard error formula. For a single quantitative variable, that means we should use the formula x bar plus or minus a multiplier times s over the square root of n. Note that the multipliers are now coming from the t distribution and not the normal distribution. Recall that the t-distribution is just a bit wider than the standard normal distribution, as discussed in the section 2.2 video. This is due to the fact that we don't know the population standard deviation and are estimating that value using s, the sample standard deviation. The additional uncertainty is accounted for by the wider distribution. So the multipliers for a t-distribution in the same level of confidence will be slightly larger than the multipliers from a standard normal distribution. That means we will not use 1.96 for 95% confidence, but we will always tell you what multiplier to use. The validity conditions for a theoretical methods have not changed, so we will still check that the distribution of the sample is relatively symmetric or that the sample size is at least 20 and the sample distribution is not strongly skewed. Again, you can use the theory-based inference applet to easily obtain a theoretical confidence interval. The theory-based inference applets are shown in the One Mean Applets video. You just need to select the box for confidence interval and enter your required confidence level instead of selecting the box for test of significance. Be sure you know how to calculate the standard error and confidence interval by hand as you will be expected to do this on an exam or assignment. Finally, the way to interpret a confidence interval has not changed. We still need the following three components. How confident you are in the interval, what the parameter is that you're trying to estimate in the context of the problem. For a single quantitative variable, this will always be the true or long run or population mean. And then be sure to give the context of what you're taking the mean of. Finally, include the endpoints of the interval that you calculated.